All right, hey folks. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you just landed here, do me a favor, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. All right, today I'm gonna go into uh, the word Satan. I've had a couple discussions in the past, more than a couple discussions in the past about Satan and people are like, they have all these ideas of what, oh, here's Satan, he's up there or somewhere around and everything. So I just wanted to go into it and go into the definitions for you guys of what this word actually means, just starting off with the basics. If you go and look and do a deep, deeper dive into the words and study them, etymology is a study of words. For those of you who don't know, it means etymology, study of words. You can learn where these words come from and really help you to get clarification when you're studying scripture and you're looking into these things. That's very, very important. You want to do that. It's very important to be diligent in God's book and study these things if you really, really want to get down to the bottom of what's really being said in here. People just take... Oh, you know, this guy said this and they pass it along and, and, and they repeat it and it's not even true. All right, so let's get into it. I'm starting off the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary what the definition of Satan is. I'm going to highlight that for you right here. The angel who, believe, who in Jewish belief is commanded by God to tempt humans to sin, to accuse the sinners, and to carry out God's punishment. Second definition, the rebellious angel who in Christian belief is adversary of God and Lord of all evil. Okay, so that's basic stuff. I think that's pretty much gives us the definition what everybody thinks who, what the word Satan means. But there's more to it than that. That really doesn't give us much of anything. You can go to other dictionaries, they're pretty much the same too. So I'm gonna click that one off. And I wanted to go right here. They have this quote, this is from Etymology Online, for those of you that don't know. This is uh, where I do the study of the words when it's online. I also go to Strong's Concordance to study the words too, or, and I use other areas sometimes I might go to Wikipedia. They do some etymology online, etymology study of various words too. And there's other places you can go to that are more academic, if you will. So in biblical sources, the Hebrew term Satan describes an adversarial role. It is not the name of a particular character. Although Hebrew storytellers, let me highlight all this. Although Hebrew storytellers as early as the sixth century BCE occasionally introduced a supernatural character whom they called the Satan. What they meant as one of any of the angels sent by God for a specific purpose of blocking or obstructing human activity. Okay, so that gives us a little bit more cl clues right there because they're saying, hey, it's not really uh, a name. It describes an adversarial role or adversary is really what is going on here. It gives more clues. So let's go to Strong's Concordance on the Hebrew side. It's 7854. The word Satan actually isn't that much in scripture. I think the devil is used more, that's it. But Satan is how they pronounce it in Hebrew. Adversary, right there, gives another clue. Adversary, also the name of a superhuman adversary of God. And there's more down here at the bottom, as you can see. Accuser, adversary, Satan. Let's go to the Strong's on the Greek side. Let me let it load up a little bit. This is the Greek side and the strong Accordance. This is an online version I recommend. If you are studying scripture, you have hard copies, obviously, of the Bible and also a strong Accordance hard copy and also a dictionary, too. So four, five, six, six, Satan. Satan, the same fallen angel as blah, four, five, six, seven, the adversary, the opposer. Thorn in the, it says here, thorn in relation to the thorn in the flesh, his adversary. So Paul had a thorn in his flesh from Jesus Christ. That's what he talked about in 2 Corinthians because he wanted it removed. He, Jesus Christ politely told him, no, I need to keep you in check, is what was being said there. You can go study that in 2 Corinthians, starting in chapter 12. And then also, too, I want to go into this a little bit, a Belial is another name for satan there's also other names baal b-a-a-l and but belial means a worthless or wicked right there a name of satan um of an epitaph of satan here worthlessness belial epitaph worthless person a worthless person is what it's saying if you go in there so i want to do uh let you guys take a look at that now when you go and look at these things go ahead and take a look at my work all right so here we have Job, the book of Job has more information about the word Satan. He's actually talking to the Lord said to Satan. So it's actually, he's uh, not giving him a title. He's just saying adversary. 
So the Lord said unto the adversary, he was there when all the sons of God came around and Satan came along with them, just like it says in scripture. But he told him, behold, he is in your hand, but save his life. He is in thine hand, save your life. That's me. He's in your hand, but save his life. So the Lord told Satan, the adversary, that he could do whatever he wanted to do to Job, but don't kill him. That's what it means. Save his life. Don't kill him. So that's another interesting fact. So if you look at that, he said unto the adversary, so like that. Here's Mark. And this is another interesting area that a lot of people miss. But Peter and Christ, Jesus Christ were together. Peter was a disciple of him. And Peter, obviously, he's the uh, first apostle. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. That's what it says right here in this highlighted section. And I'm going to highlight more of it over here. Okay. But when he, I wish I could get rid of this thing right here. But when he turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan. So Christ right here, you see Peter, get behind me, Satan. He called Peter Satan, or the adversary. Because at that time, Peter was the adversary of Satan. So Peter could be a Satan at that time, which he was, because Christ called him that. So people could be the Satan, the adversary. You can have an adversary. People have adversaries in life. You can have a Satan. Technically, you can say, This guy's my adversary. You call him a Satan, a devil. Technically. Here's one Peter. I wanted to go over this. Chapter 5, verse... No, 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because adversary... So there's the word adversary with the devil. The adversary of the devil. Highlight it right there for you. See, folks? As a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. So there's adversary devil there. So 2 Corinthians... This was another good area, and here's another where Satan is being used in the New Testament. And no marvel, Satan himself, you can see him how it is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers are transformed as the ministers of righteousness. So Satan's ministers can be transformed as ministers of righteousness. That's another area that gives some more clues. That's very, very important. This is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I want to go over this uh, also too, because it talks about even him, whose coming is after working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. So this uh, person is a liar. It's pretty simple. Come up with that. A liar. A worthless person. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they deceive not the love of truth and might be saved. So all deceivableness, unrighteousness. So there's unrighteousness with that. And then First John, I wanted to go into this too because he goes in the cave and Abel very briefly in First John. And he says, not as Cain who was of that wicked one slew his brother and wherefore slew he him because his own works were evil and his brothers were righteous. So Cain's works were evil and his brothers were righteousness. So that's very, very important. It gives you more clues. Actually, it's the scripture is actually giving you more clues to go over to that area of scripture and study Cain and Abel and what's being said there. I've gone over it many, many, many times and you can pick out more and more every time you go over it again. And then here it is in Genesis. Um, and I wanted to go over this. And the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel thy brother? He said, I, I know not, I'm my brother's keeper. He said, what have you done? The voice of thy brother's blood cries to me. So Cain, or Abel's blood was crying at, to, from the ground to the Lord, because he says unto me, to, to the Lord, from the ground. So, and now they're cursed from then. So what's interesting, if you go up, sin lies at the door. So anytime you see the sin, which is from the devil, and I'm going to go over that in a later uh, video about sin, what that word actually means. And so it has with the brother's blood. And now thy curse from her, which open her hand, or open her mouth to receive that brother's blood in, from thy hand. So the earth opened her mouth to receive that brother's blood from thy hand. So from Cain's hand. Cain had the blood. He drank the blood because he was of the devil or he was Satan. He was the adversary. Cain was the adversary of, of Abel, who was righteous. 
that we know from John and Cain was of the devil. All right, folks, that's the end of my video. That was very, very brief. I don't want to make it too long. So when you're going in and you're studying the word Satan, go ahead and check all the other areas in scripture. I just briefly did this. There's much more areas. You could spend hours just studying this and looking at it very, very closely. Like what is actually truly being said? And that's very, very, very important. Don't take another man's word for it. Don't even take my word for it. Go ahead and study it for yourself. All right, that's the end of my video. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.